Elizabeth was a remarkable child. She had this exuberant, infectious energy, beautiful, sparkling blue eyes. You know, I had, had the privilege and the joy of watching Elizabeth grow into a beautiful, inspiring young woman. So I first met Liz when we were really young and we grew up together. And I got to know her as this really deeply funny person who can make anyone laugh. Meeting Elizabeth was sheer serendipity. I happened to be on call, and as I do for all new consults, I planned on meeting the patient and the family. What I wasn't prepared was that chance encounter was going to change the next seven or eight years of my life. I had the unfortunate job of breaking the news to Elizabeth's parents that she had an inoperable brain tumor. Um, it was one of the hardest conversations I've ever had to have. She did not seem scared about the diagnosis. She seemed undaunted. She seemed so full of the energy and the passion. The most amazing, bright, energetic girl. The fact that there was no research going on in gliomatosis cerebri is extremely tragic. Pharmaceutical companies and the National Institutes of Health don't find it a compelling enough disease to study because it is so rare. We started off talking about the disparity of the situation and ended it talking about hope, about, well, we do have resources available. We do have the opportunity to make a difference here. That was the genesis for Elizabeth Hope. It was actually Elizabeth's idea to name the fund it was a brilliant name. It embodied everything about Elizabeth. It came from Elizabeth and it radiated out the very idea that we were giving hope to patients who previously had none. The first formal Elizabeth Hope fundraising event really was remarkable. I'm not surprised one bit that people rallied to Elizabeth. She was somebody that you couldn't imagine not helping. Of course we're going to do something. Everybody wanted to, to help, to fix, to be a part of it. One of the amazing phenomenon that developed around Elizabeth's Hope is how the burgeoning impact of social media played a role. We began noticing that Elizabeth's Hope became the go-to site on the internet for any family who had gliomatosis cerebri. And we began seeing patients come to us sending us their samples, sending us their films. And within a very short period of time, we became the worldwide experts in this otherwise rare and incurable disease. And now we can reach out to really the world at large and have these families come together and bring hope for children with otherwise incurable brain tumors. The majority of my research has been directed toward a specific tumor called a diffuse intrinsic pontine glioma, or DIPG. What was intriguing is when we started exploring the, the genomics of DIPG and found that that tumor is very closely aligned with other large central nervous system tumors that affect the midline in children, including gliomatosis cerebri. So when we first were able to biopsy a piece of Elizabeth's tumor, that tumor was quickly transported to the laboratory where the DNA was isolated and we spent the next several months sequencing the DNA from her tumor. Her tumor, fittingly, is the first gliomatosis cerebri specimen ever to have the full exome sequenced. What was science fiction in 2011 is now part of our daily reality. We take these tumors, we sequence them, and we come up with new opportunities for treatment of tumors which otherwise seem hopeless to treat. Funding for pediatric cancers is so small. 4% of the national NIH cancer budget is dedicated towards children. That makes people angry. It makes families angry. It makes researchers angry. Our children absolutely deserve more than this. So today I'm working with the tumor registries here collecting information and data about patients who've been diagnosed with GC. The registries are funded by families who have lost children to these diseases, and it's a way for them to turn their losses into something meaningful. 
Uh, I think about Liz every time I add another name to that list. I think it's important that we remember that this is all coming back and comes full circle back to Elizabeth. And to think that in just five or six short years, her dream and her hope really has become a reality does bring a little bit of a smile to me. Someday, when a doctor tells a family whose child has been diagnosed with GC that there is treatment and that there is a cure, what a legacy that is for our girl.